Put a hands for Jesus if you can. Jesus. Say after me, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Spirit and authority. And authority. Say it again. The Holy Spirit and authority. Say it again. The Holy Spirit and authority. Now have your seats. There's a reason why I love the Holy Spirit so much. Because I know him. I know him. And he knows me. And how do I know him? I know him as the one who strengthens me. You may be sitting down where you are sitting down and knowing what's uh, um, happening tomorrow the way you are because the, the problem here is not about just talking about the Holy Spirit it's about knowing it's about knowing these things if you, if you are aware that the Holy Ghost is inside of you residing in your inside now as I said our topic today or tonight I'll talk about the Holy Spirit and authority. Because most Christians, we have a problem, and this is the biggest problem ever, where we have the Holy Ghost in us, and we have the authority in us, but we don't know how to use these two. Do you know you have that authority, or do you know that you are that powerful? That the moment you can arrive in your house, every problem is a must to run away. But hear this. Such does not happen to you. Because you, of awareness. Our message tonight. Okay, so let's check the book of John chapter 1. And the most common verse, most of you, you know it. Now, go to John 1 verse 12. What does the Bible say? Do we really understand what, what the Bible say? Now, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right. I, I love that one. Right to become children of God. Now, sometimes we may look at the scripture and just see the word right. But there is something very deep to that word. Amen. How many here they know that they have got human rights in the country they live in? How many know about human rights? Can I see your hands up? If you know you have got human rights, can I see your hands up? All right. What, what, what are human rights? What are human rights? Did you hear that? What are human rights? If you are standing, dressed up, and, and then somebody comes to you and say you didn't dress well, and you, you are thinking you dressed well, and this person comes and says, you didn't dress well, and he's harassing you. What is he doing to you? Huh? He's violating your rights. Rights for what? Human rights of what? Of your dressing. Right, you have the right to dress. Now, listen to me. Now, you, you're dressing something. You know, in these days, people can dress, you know. And you're a woman, and you're dressing something. We don't even know whether it's a dress or it's a blouse. We don't even you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then somebody comes and is harassing you. He said, you didn't dress well. Hey, you better change this thing. He is actually violating your rights. 
Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Now, rights are not so, you know, they are not so strong in, in, in church. But rights are so strong out there to a level where if a person violates your rights, you can even sue a person. But in church, the word rights, people who are given rights before actually democracy came, who are the children of God, who were given rights. The Bible says for those who believed in him, we are given rights to become a child of God. Any person coming, intimidating you as a child of God and giving you a problem, he is violating the rights of you being a child of God. But because you don't know your rights, this is what happens. If you don't know your human rights, a person can keep on insulting you, doing all noises around you. You'll be saying, oh, this person, oh, this, because you don't know your rights. The same way, if you're in church, God gave us rights. But the question is, what are you doing with, the, with your rights? The devil is coming around you, fighting you, fighting your job, fighting your career, all the things you're trying to do. He's after you. And you're sitting with your rights in your house. And you are like, oh, I don't know why, why I'm passing through what I'm passing through. Oh, boy, you don't know the rights you have in Christ Jesus. You have got rights. Look at him and say, I am not a child of God by inconvenience. <laughs> it's not an inconvenience. No, no, no. You are not that. So that's where the whole problem is. Christians don't know their rights. What are your rights? It, it is your right. To be hurt, not to be sick, is part of your spiritual rights. It is your right to be delivered. Because Jesus said it, He said it in the Constitution, which is your Bible. He says He sent His word and He healed them from their diseases. Upon Mount Zion shall be delivered. It is your right. It's in our spiritual constitution. But the devil's violating them every day and you are sitting down and relaxing. Come on. The Bible says we we are given the right. So tonight you better, you better wake up. I said you better wake up. Otherwise, the devil is actually violating your rights. And you are sitting down like, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Mm. <clears throat> hallelujah. You know? And I like people who are so spiritual. You know, the people who are very spiritual. Now, even how they pray, they pray in a spiritual way. Then, oh, yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. But problems. Too much problems to consume. And they're seeing in a spiritual way, in a spiritual man. You see? They sing songs. God is good. He has taken me from here. One it tata, one is susara. <laughs> oh, you, you are laughing? I'm trying. It says, it says what? One it tata, one is susala, one e. Hey, it's okay, it's okay. One bec, one becca. One beke ale, one is tata, one is susala, one is tata, one is... Hey, we don't want you. 
We thank God. We thank God that you came in, but it's okay. I can do it. <laughs> Let's do it. One. One. One is Susala. One. Uyo. Wow. So which means he has taken me from here. He has put me here. He has taken me from here. He has put me here. Oh. That's what the song sings, right? And you see people in church singing that song. Hey, one it da da da, one it so sala, one it. All right, so they are singing, but oh my God, if you look at them, and I'm standing here in church, and I'm looking as a prophet, and the people are singing, they're in the spirit. But when I check as a prophet, in fact, their life is moving from here to here to here. And I'm like, what nonsense is this? <laughs> And I'm like, what's really happening? <laughs> so I wonder, who has picked you from here to here to here? Is it God or demons? You know, they are busy. Oh, one is so sad. One is. Uyo. No, I want to hear that one. Uyo what? Uyo. Ubereka. Me meaning he carried you. He carried you. Oh what? Oh he has mess on me. He has a purpose with me. I don't know. Different translations according to a version of the Bible they are using. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, all right. Now imagine, imagine you are there and then you, you, you are singing a song. You're in the spirit. Okay. God has taken you from where you are talking about to where you are saying. And I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm, I'm like, uh-huh. And after that, you're like, man of God, help me many problems. <laughs> and I'm like, I thought you were singing just now that God has taken you from this level to another level to another level to another level. Ladies and gentlemen, that is very important. God is taking us every day from one place to another place. But we don't want him to take us by faith. We want in reality, it must be seen. Oh, am I talking to somebody right here? Because we are singing in a song, yes. By faith, we are singing things, yes. But it's not the time of just singing in faith. Because James says, show me your faith. I'm going to show you my works. Oh, yes. Faith without works is dead. dead. We have come into a reality zone where we don't want to see faith. We want to see works. We want to see reality. We want to see you moving physically from one place to another. Oh, yes. From that place to another. Oh, yes. It is a time to believe. Oh, it is yes. a time to experience. Oh, yes. Somebody shout yes. 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 Bring it up, daddy. So faith. Oh, I'm talking to someone right here. Oh, yes. So faith, it's not just a statement. Because tonight I want you to receive. You will not leave this place tonight with empty hand. And I'm, I can bet that one. You're going to get out of this place with a testimony. I receive. Oh, so you see this. How many are tired of just believing? They want to see. They want to they wanna see. They want to see. Huh? Hey. Hey. <laughs> oh. It's on time just to believe. It's time to experience. Because faith is not spiritual. If you think faith is a spiritual thing, forget it. Because the Bible says faith is a substance. A substance can be touched. Bring it on, Major. Bring it on. So faith is not what you believe in the spirit. It is what you see. That what you can touch with your hand. 
It is not what you think. It's what you can see in the physical. I'm here to... Ex- oh, 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 oh. You are tired. I think, I think you are ready or you are tired hey. in the overflow, in the whole thing. Are you there, somebody? Somebody shout to you. Yeah. Now, here it is. For those who, were, who, who received him, who believed in his name, were you given a right. You have dangerous rights. Do you know the devil knows that you are untouchable? But why he touches you, he takes advantage of your ignorance. That's why the devil will not attack a happy man. The devil will never attack a happy woman. The devil will attack a depressed woman. This is why the devil, before attacking you, he brings in a lot of problems around you. So to put you in depression. And when he sees depression, he doesn't see God. Because God is not in depression. When he sees there's not God, it becomes a habitation where he can break through, he can attack you, he can do anything with you. Not when you are happy. Am I talking to someone? That's why. That's what the whole, the whole verse says. Rejoice. And I say unto you, rejoice. Rejoice always. And I say unto you, re- rejoice. Because you are given the right. Oh, yeah. I, I, I will tell you something. Because we're talking about the right now, and there's some scripture. We'll look in another verse where it says authority. And we'll talk also the meaning of authority. Because the word right, which is used in there, go back to the scripture. Yet all who received him to those who believed in his name, he gave the right. The word right there is different in the book of King James Version. Now, in King James Version, it reads in this way. All right? So the Bible says. But as many as received him, to them gave he power. So it's not authority, it's not a right, it's what? Power. Now, I want you to understand this. Why is the, the Bible using right somewhere? In somewhere it is using power. All right. Now, we're going to go. We're going to go again. Now, give me um, uh, good news Bible. All right, good news Bible. What does it say? It also talks of the right. Message translation says what? He gave them true selves. True selves. The word true selves there it is what has placed the word right power. Are you there? Are, are you following? Yes. Now, give me Amplified. Now, Amplified is going to speak all those things together. Um, hey. He gave authority power privilege right bring it up now you must understand where amplified is coming from amplified is coming from why we we use amplified because amplified it is the only bible that interpreted into english from two versions ancient greek the real Greek that was interpreted from the original Hebrew. So Amplified takes what Greek Bible says and what Hebrew Bible says. That's why he puts authority, he puts power, he puts everything. You there, right? So what does that mean to you? So that word authority, privilege, right, comes from a Greek word, exousia. Oh, you are here or your home or one or the two. Bring it on, Major One. Exousia, exousia. X, E, X, S, U, S, I, A. Exousia. Exousia. S. U S I A A E X S exousia. Now the word exousia means what? It means 
the right power, authority, privilege. But I want you to get this statement very well. <laughs> because we're having people in church who are like, oh Lord, you see? I don't wait, I don't, I don't wait for God on anything. I use my rights that I have with Him. If I approach you, when you are sitting there, pray for me, I want my things to change. I don't, I don't go, let me ask God if it's God's will or no. I use my rights to command the devil out of your way. So if you are sitting down waiting for, for God to intervene, you're wasting your time because God, as far as the Bible is concerned, he did everything for you. He can't come for the second time from heaven. He already came through his son, Jesus. He came, lived among us. We beheld his glory, full of grace and truth. He was on earth with Jesus Christ, died and went to heaven. He will never come again. Where, imagine God himself. God. You are, you are in your house in Soshankoven. Oh, Father, come down. Intervene. Oh, you think God in heaven, you believe in his throne. Where are you going, God? I'm going to Soshankoven. <laughs> why? Angels are asking, why? Uh, because uh, there's a lady there, uh, her boyfriend is mistreating her. <laughs> How? Uh, he's not answering his uh, phone calls. You, 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 are you serious? God will never come from heaven. He will never, and he has never done that. There are few moments we hear God came on earth. Few moments. We can see God. We say, oh, we saw God. I have seen a lot of times where I, say, I saw God because I saw his presence. You see? I saw his presence. I'm like, oh, he's here. I have seen his Shekinah. He's a visible glory. Like, wow. You see? One time I was with some people here at the prayer mountain. And as we were praying, there was a glory from heaven that came upon us. I, I don't know who was there with us. All right. All, all those were there. You were there also? Can I see your hands up? Especially that. Oh, we were there, and then all of a sudden, boom, the glory just came upon us. You see? Physical glory. So that does not mean, that does not mean you have seen God. Do you understand? Are you here or are you home? That does not mean you have seen, you can't say I saw God, you can't. I have seen this uh, a few times, a few moments. I've seen his presence on this seat. You know, I said, I think, uh, some, few, some days ago. That's his presence. The most dangerous thing to see his presence. But not him. Yahweh, I am whom I am. <laughs> hey. Hey. He will, never, he will never leave. Even if you live in his Santon, he will never come. <laughs> I know, hey, he has to come because I live in Malaba stand. He will never. <laughs> what am I saying? God finished the work. What else do you want? He sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Defeated Satan. And, and he gave us the authority. He gave us the rights. The rights that Jesus had. He gave you. Because it was only Jesus who was a child of God. He was the only one. And the Bible calls him. He is our firstborn. He is the firstborn in the family. So now the rights that he had. To command sickness to go. To command demons to go. He took those rights and gave you. So what else do you want? What else are you waiting for? And, and God is like, ah, really? 
I gave them the rice my son had. But you're still there, waiting for God to come down and, and, and bring something. Tonight, we are not doing that. Tonight, we are getting anything we need because we have a right to become rich. We have a right. Oh, my goodness. If you are hearing me, shout yes. Yes. You better tell your neighbor that you better use your rights or I'm going to use my rights. Even the devil is wondering you. Like, really, you are, you are, what, what's happening with you? <laughs> Do you know the rights that you have? You have tremendous rights. Dangerous rights. You can command anything on this earth to happen. You can command the sun to stand. It can stop moving. That's how dangerous you are. The reason why the world opposes us. They say, no, 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 no. This is a fake. It's because they don't know. They don't know the rights we have. We just feel even solid. We can cause trouble in this world. I'm telling you, if one day we can just think like, okay, I remember one time, one time, I commanded the tree to dry. It dried same time. And I was at the prayer mountain, and uh, we were praying. We were praying. Uh, we were praying. I was with uh, some of the sons here, um, well, Apostle Tana and other, other, other. We're in the mountain, we are praying. And it was raining with the Basilavma. Where, where's Basilavma? All right. And we are praying there, and the rain started. I'm holding a Bible, eh? And rain is coming. And this Bible is not mine. It's for God. So I said, God, wait your Bible. I opened it and I put it there. The rain is stopped. Don't do this at home, eh? <laughs> it will be wet, like seriously. <laughs> These things need people of faith. I said, wait your Bible. I opened it and I said, wait your Bible. And there was also, I was also one time I was with my son, uh, uh, Prophet Nyasuru from Australia, and um, uh, another son from South Sudan. And I took him to prayer mountain. And they began to rain. I said, In the days of my prophecy, it shall never rain. The Bible says that. That in the last days, we raised up two groups of prophets. In the days of their prophecy, it will never rain. It can't be. I said, it can't be. You, I, I'm, I'm about to preach. Of course, prophets and rain are their best friends. I'm telling you, prophets are very good at calling rain. Very good. But not when I'm about to preach. No, 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 no. When I'm preaching, and the rain is coming. Everybody run away. Let's run. Let's run. Rain. A prophet in the front run. How many were there? I was teaching pastors, and I said, take my car, bring it in the tent. Yes. All of you were here. All my pastors were there. All right. All my pastors here. You were there? Can I see your hands up? All of you who were there. I said, bring my car in the tent, in the miracle tent. And there was no rain. No rain. The, was it there that day? No, there was no rain when I said, bring it in the tent. Yes. And they were wondering, and they brought the car in the tent. After bringing the tent, 30 minutes later, it never, it wasn't even a rain. Stones. You know, many cars, their screens were broken. And me, I said, I knew these things. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> you 
were there? I was there, Papa. I said, bring the car inside. And, and the car came right before the rain, you know. That shows you. I even knew that the rain that was going to come. It would bring, it, it won't just be rain. I said, oh, bring my car inside. Now imagine we're in the tent. I am preaching in the tent. I said, bring the car to join us in the tent. You know, my, my, my guys came like, oh, why? Uh, but the outside is okay. I said, shut up. Bring my car inside. <laughs> they brought the car inside. After bringing it, 30 minutes later, it was a rain with the stones. And some people, their screens were broken and all those noises. I said, no, 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 no. Not my bentry. Preach, black man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I, I was just exercising the authority, the privilege I have in Christ. From today, I want you to experience this. It's not for some certain people, for Major One, it's for everybody. We have the rights. <laughs>